Welcome back to the program. You've heard the story of Private Jess LaRochelle on this program, and it was told by the former chief of the defense staff, retired General Rick Hillier. And there's a group of veterans who want to make sure that Private Jess LaRochelle gets the Canadian Victoria Cross, never been awarded before. But you may not remember the story, and it's a story that once you hear it will be burned into you because it's a story of heroism. And now there's a crossroads moment, and I want to welcome retired General Rick Hill. You're back to tell tell the story about Private Jess Leverchelle and remind people of his heroism and then the crisis he's facing right now. Uh, First of all, uh, thanks for your service. As always, General, uh, great to have you back. Um, And I hope you and and your clan are well. Can you remind us of uh, Private Leverchelle's heroism in Afghanistan? Uh, Helen, thanks. Glad to be back. And, you know, Jess LaRochelle is just this incredible Canadian son uh, who, when we asked of him, stood tall in the midst of frightening combat and attack on his position, his platoon, his battle group. On the on the uh, 6th of, wrong, on the 14th of October 2006, Jess was with his uh, platoon at the Strong Point Center in Afghanistan and Kandahar province. Uh, they were told an attack was coming in. They had intelligence that warned of that. Uh, they only had a few soldiers because one of the sections in that platoon was back in Kandahar uh, getting a new vehicle or getting their vehicle repaired to come back out. Uh, they had to put somebody into an observation post. We never put just one person alone, but this time they were so short troops that the section second in command, Master Corporal Jeremy LeBlanc, uh, asked for a volunteer, and he said, I can only put one soldier up there. I don't want to designate that soldier because it is going to be dangerous. We we'll asked for volunteers. Jess Larishell, 24-year-old son of Canada, put his hand up, went into the observation post, and immediately the attack sort of commenced, focused really on his observation post. In the opening seconds, rocket-propelled grenades exploded, demolishing the observation post, exploded over his head. Jess at one point looked up, he said, and, and, and he thought it was like a Star Wars movie, the explosions overhead. He was knocked back into the to steel hard, uh, baked in the desert clay, uh, got his head struck hard. He had a detached retina in his right eye, had a concussion. He's bleeding from the ears, and he's broken vertebrae in his neck and in his back, although he doesn't know it. He just knows that he hurts a lot. He returns fire with the machine gun uh, at the attack coming in, probably a platoon sized attack, therefore 20, 20 plus fighters from the Taliban coming directly at him. He returns fire with that machine gun. He saves about 100 rounds for a last ditch sort of defense in the machine gun, and then he starts firing M72 rockets back at the uh, attackers one at a time, you know, pick up the cardboard tube, extend it, pop the sights up, take the sight out, cock it, and fire, firing directly at the Taliban fighters himself, all the while under constant machine gun fire, rocket-propelled grenade fire, and AK-47 fire uh, himself from those fighters that are coming at him. He doesn't let up. He breaks up the attack. Uh, about two to three hours later, the platoon commander comes up to the position, looked at the observation post and thought, oh, my goodness, nobody is alive in there. And then the head of that young soldier, Jess Larichelle, popped up and said, hey, sir, I'll provide covering fire. You come on in. Uh, Ray Corby, the, the platoon commander who had been in command less than three weeks, uh, went in. and He was a hero himself that day and said to Jess, you know, you've done great work here. I'll send somebody up to relieve you. And Jess said, sir, you know, I don't want to impose this on somebody else. I've been here. I will stay. So he volunteered a second time to stay, carried on with the fight. Later that evening was reinforced with one of his uh, buddies, his soldier, and a platoon warrant officer, and they stayed there throughout the night. The next morning, uh, they withdrew from the position, having been there for 24 hours. And in that fight, during most of that time, Jess went back into uh, Kandahar with the platoon, because two of his buddies from that uh, from that platoon had been killed in the firefight. Right. And during the late afternoon, he yelled, carried a coffin of Private Blake Williamson, one of his friends who had been killed, onto the aircraft. And only after that, said to his platoon uh, commander and the medic there, hey, I'm hurting, and was then taken off the, uh, the off combat, off the platoon, and diagnosed with the injuries that he had. He was eventually evacuated from theater, and he was awarded the Star of Military uh, Valor, which is the second highest award 
And and we in our small group now think that in the years since, there's enough new information about the fact that he volunteered to go into the observation post by himself, knowing what the threat was, that he volunteered to stay, that despite being low on ammunition, he continued to fight there using the rocket launchers themselves, and despite being wounded so badly that it, those wounds affect him to this day in a terrible, terrible way, he carried on that fight and then carried on with the ceremony mm. on the ramp to say goodbye to his friend. We think that deserves a relook. And we think if you look at the definition of what is required for the Victoria Cross, Canada's first Victoria Cross, this would be, we think that valor in the presence of the enemy was demonstrated by Jess Larichelle that day and that he should be considered for, and we believe, awarded the Victoria Cross. I got a letter from one of your colleagues who said, I'm writing you today because I've been informed by my colleagues that Jess is quite sick. And reportedly his father is where Jess may not live to see the award presented to him. I'm speaking with retired General Rick Hillier, who's just told the incredible, remarkable, heroic story of Private Jess LaRochelle. And tell me what's going on with, with, with Jess right now. Well, Evan, I can't comment specifically on his medical situation. That would be inappropriate for me. Jess has suffered since he was wounded that day. He's gone through tremendous uh, medical challenges and continues to do so. I did spend some time with him in early November I spent about four hours with he and some time with he and his mother. And old came out and that little twinkle in his eye. And I said, you know, I can recognize your eyes in there, young man. And uh, we had a good period of time together. But he's undergoing some significant challenges. The, the broken vertebrae have never, never healed appropriately. He's always in pain. Uh, the trauma and the brain trauma that he uh, got that day uh, in October of 2006 from the explosions of the rocket-propelled grenades. And not only that, but from firing the rocket launchers himself and the machine guns themselves. And I said, hey, did you have your defenders on, for example? I said, no, no, you can't listen and see where the enemy is coming from. But what's happening if you have your defenders on? So when you're firing a machine gun constantly, rockets are exploding around you and you're firing, you get concussion. He was bleeding from the ears. And so that kind of traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress disorder, operational stress injury, you know, those kinds of things have affected Jess. And he's been challenged medically since uh, that day in October of 2006. And the challenge is severe is all that I would say. He's got a, a network around him that, that help him out. He's got a network of battle buddies that want to be able to reach out to him. But he's, he's very much a loner, too, in these past years. So, so he is challenged. Uh, retired General uh, Rick Hillier telling the remarkable story um, of Jess LaRochelle. By the way, I just got a note. Hi, Evan. Kyle from Hamilton. I'm a teacher. I have no complaints now as a teacher with online learning because this soldier has gone through a, a lifetime more than I'll ever suffer. The man is a hero. Uh, General Hillier, what does it take now to get the Canadian Victoria Cross to Private LaRochelle? Well, you know, what we've never said is that Jess Larochelle must get the Victoria Cross. What we've said is this requires, this really is worth a review of his citation and then potentially the review of others throughout Canada's history. And, and, and what it requires now is somebody in the chain of command from the Governor General down to the Chief of Defence Staff to say, yes, you know, we're convinced. We've got a groundswell of support across the country from cities and municipalities and towns who've moved resolutions to support this, from the Royal Canadian Legion, from the vast number of, you know, uh, regimental associations and organizations and, right. and, and true patriot love those. And so what we would want is maybe one of our chain of command, whether it's the governor general, whether it's the prime minister, whether it's the minister of defense or the chief of defense staff say, okay, we need to do an independent sort of reassessment of this citation take into consideration that new information and make a decision one way or the other. And then at the same time, step two, well, determine if we want to go back in history a little further and do some more. Well, we need, it, we um, need somebody to step up. You got a platform here, uh, Rick Hill. You know that you always got a platform. This isn't a powerful story. Uh, we hope this happens. We honor our men and women who served like you and like Jess LaRochelle. I hope someone's listening out there. Uh, thank you, General Hillier. Oh, you always have a place here. 